Hey guys, welcome back to F1 2021, part 7 of the My Team career mode for Cross GT Racing. Coming off a, let's say, disappointing result in the Canadian Grand Prix. Getting pole position in qualifying, only to have to retire due to a, a an engine failure in, I think it was like lap 4. So barely even into the race and had to retire due to a malfunction but we're gonna have to pick ourselves up move on put it behind us head on to round eight as we head back to the facility now we've got a quick 10 day turnaround here so we head straight into the R&D screen R&D's coming along pretty well so I'm pretty happy with, with where the car's at um, just the yeah just the durability of our parts uh, was an issue for the last round but we've uh, replaced the parts put some new ones in so we should be good to go chassis upgrade uh, came through before the last race so that's now starting to come along nicely powertrain's going really well we're going to look at a major energy recovery system upgrade here magnetic compound upgrade uh, quite a big uh, discount on that. Oh, we're not going to look at that one. Nope. We're going to go. Uh, we're going to go cylinder head. So, engine power a big focus. We're only just ahead of Alpine in terms of uh, the vehicle performance comparison chart. So, going to focus on that one. Try and get some more power out of the car. I mean, it does pretty well already, but you know, more power is, is always a good thing, especially in those straights. That seems to be the problem for us. Uh, also, a, uh, looks like we're going to do a drag reduction upgrade there, a minor one for the car. Aerodynamics always a good thing for us to focus on. Uh, heading to activity timeline. So yes, yeah, so we've got nine days worth of activities to fill in here. So uh, going to focus on uh, mostly team acclaim. We're at uh, team acclaim level nine. If we can get to ten, we can bring a new sponsor on board, get some more money in to the team. Oh, yep, a uh, message from Chris there about the mechanical failure in the last race. Uh, so they've uh, managed to identify the cause of the issue, and it's provided some insight into their research and uh, efforts, but we got no points for it. That's great. So we had start advancing time. Durability department needs us to take a look at something. Could you take a look at this for us, please? Okay, so an internal audit has found that there are some uh, poorly allocated funds that could be used elsewhere. So do we want to improve productivity or reallocate the funds to R&D? I mean, we get a small discount on a part or we get lots of resource points. The department wants me to pass on their thanks for helping out. That's this one. So we're going to take the resource points. I mean, we get what, like 30 points off a part versus 375 extra resource points to use. It's an easy, easy decision. So we can go back into the R&D screen and now allocate funds to another um, another R&D upgrade. Looking at chassis, uh, chassis lacking behind the other departments quite a bit. So go for a tire wear upgrade. Tire wear upgrades always uh, good. As we head back to the main screen, advance time again. There's our weekly income coming through. All of our, our different new parts activities. Are completed without issue. They'll be on the car, ready for the next race weekend. Awesome. So, round eight, heading off to uh, the French Grand Prix. We've got quite a bit of money sitting here. So we're going to go back to the facilities screen, and we're going to upgrade uh, one of our facilities. We're going to focus on, uh, I do believe it is build time for the powertrain department. Um, we can't increase fabrication, which would be great. We just don't have the funds for that. 2.2 million. We've got 1.54. Uh, go with build time. Reduce the time for R&D by 20%. Always good. Try and get those facilities up as much as we can uh, in this first season so that we can really be uh, competitive in the second season. As uh, we take a look at the results of practice, 
plenty of resource points gained there. Also a bunch of uh, different development boosts. Uh, that magnetic compound upgrade that uh, we were talking about before, before we did the cylinder head upgrade. Um, getting a heavy focus on this, I mean, most of these upgrades or development boosts are actually based on that. I mean, now it's, you know, 86% discount. Like, it's almost going to be free to get. Which is great for us. Um, all that effort put into practicing. Um, my team claimed, uh, my my driver claimed dropping there because of the loss for the rivalry with Ocon. Um, but you know, team claims still going up. We're almost at ten. Once we get to ten, we can get a brand new sponsor and get some more money as we head into qualifying now in the French Grand Prix. Coming around, cut in turn one, uh, but not getting a. Uh, corner cutting warning there, luckily. We're now sitting pretty in, in third. As we head through these uh, sort of uh, lower speed sections here. Now P1 for qualifying. Now we come onto this long straight though, and our straight line speed isn't isn't the, the greatest. It's not bad, but it's definitely not where we want it to be. Luckily though, we get enough speed coming out of the corners that we can compensate for our um, lack of uh, power on the straights. Drop down to P4 during that section, back up to P1 now. Hamilton now ahead of us, that Mercedes has got the power to, to burn us. He's just slowly pulling away there. But we break quite heavily into some of these corners. Um, still sort of getting a feel for these cars in this game, but not doing too bad. I mean, P5 at this point, if we come down to the last two turns, we go very wide with the second to last corner there, it drops us back to seventh now. Final corner, we go a little bit wide, down the final straight towards the start finish line, qualifying complete. It was a pretty good lap. For this track, I mean, this is a relatively high speed track. So, P7 and qualifying there, only half a second off Lewis Hamilton's pace, so really good lap from us. Uh, Gwen Yuzhou, our teammate, doesn't show on here, but he uh, qualified in P20, around where he would normally qualify, so he's consistent and he's good at gaining positions back anyway, so I'm not too fussed about that, but P7 for us. Could set up a really good finish for us in this race if we can just hold on to to the track position there. As we take a look, our team acclaim uh, page. So driver claim is still going up, which is great. We're almost now at team claim level 10, which is what we want to get. So by the end of this race, we should have team claim level 10 and a brand new sponsor on board. On to race day. Hello and welcome to the circuit Paul Ricard, current home of the French Grand Prix and events dating all the way back to 1906. It's been held at many venues over the years with famous moments from Dijon and Manicor, the feature of many a highlights reel. And let's hope we see more of those in the race today. Mastering a lap of Paul Ricard means getting to know 15 corners, six left and nine right for an overall lap distance of 3.6 miles. The two halves of the long Mistral Strait are separated by a heavy braking zone into a potential overtaking hotspot at the Chicane Noor. And watch out for the drivers running onto the distinctive coloured stripes, which are low in grip and highly abrasive. Anthony Davidson joins me once again in the commentary box. And it's fantastic to have you with us here today. But I'm curious, as a man with experience out on the track, how do you stop those pre-race nerves from becoming overwhelming when you're lining up on the grid. But from the moment qualifying's over, you start to feel the adrenaline in your body build up and the buzz in your stomach as you anticipate the rundown into turn one. It's all a bit like going into battle and the unknown situation makes you nervous. Those pre-race nerves are a good thing. The day you don't have them means that you don't care anymore. And of course, you have to make sure that all the procedures are second nature to you so that they're not taking up too much of your capacity. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position and Valtteri Bottas will line up alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid we have Leclerc, Verstappen, Lando Norris and Perez. The captain, Sainz, Ricardo, and Pierre Gasly. 
Fernando Alonso, Sonoda, Antonio Giovinazzi, and Vettel, Ocon, Stroll, Kimi Raikkonen, and Mick Schumacher, Russell, Joe, Mazepin, and Nicholas Latifi. That's it then, it's time to go racing as we head to trackside for today's race. This is our engine supplier's home Grand Prix. Let's give them a race worth watching. Sounds good to me. Home of Reno, here in France. Really want to put on a good performance there and show them what their, their engine is doing for our car. Qualified in the top 10, so we have to start on the softs. We do five laps in the softs, eight on the mediums, 14 laps of fuel in a 13 lap race, just because we're going to be pushing the car as hard as we can. So we're going to need that extra fuel to get us home at the end. As we line up on the grid alongside Perry's in the Red Bull, five red lights. And we're off and away for round eight of the F1 2021 season. ERS activated right off the bat as Sainz gets an amazing start and flies right up along the outside of Norris. Now he's battling for sixth. And he gets it and we come around the outside of Norris there, but we just don't have the speed. A little bit of a collision there with Gasly, who is behind us in ninth. We do end up getting around the inside of Norris there on that corner. Now it's a, a battle with signs. But we can't win it. He's got the better track position. Now everything's starting to settle down as all the cars get into the racing line. Norris is pulling up very quickly on us. That McLaren's got so much power. But we just managed to hold on enough feeding into turns 8 and 9. And as it's been documented in some of the previous races, our car has amazing acceleration out of these corners. So we're able to gain that time back that we lose in the straights. The energy store is getting worn, reducing our overall capacity. The more charge you hold, the faster that capacity will drop. Okay, so again, more ERS issues. We may have to look at swapping out some parts before the next Grand Prix, but we can manage for now. As we braking very hard there into turn 14. Sets up nicely for turn 15 though. Coming down the back straight as Valtteri Bottas posts the fastest lap of 140.8. We post a 144.7, so we're four seconds off the pace to Valtteri Bottas in that Mercedes but P7 P7 still started at 7th still holding on to 7th into lap 2 as we go wide through turn 3 and it messes us up in turn 4 but we manage to fix it and get back into a groove through turn 5 luckily for us we still managed to hold up Norris there and we've actually gained more time on him we've lost the signs but we've gained time to Norris so that's only going to help us on these straights where the McLaren easily has the power advantage over us. But we can hold on enough before we get down to turn 8 and then through turn 9. Norris though, he's got some good acceleration through those turns as well as he is closing that gap pretty quick. Go as hard as we can on the inside of this corner to try and keep him out. And Norris comes flying through on the outside and clips our left wheel there. We get a warning for that one, but what a move by Norris as we go wide, go very wide. At turn, turn 12 there. We're starting to, starting to catch up now though through these, through these harder corners there and we go a little bit wide there at 15 but we do manage to, to keep a good line there as Max Verstappen now posting the fastest lap at 136 we will post a 139 You'll be on the mediums. all right pit window going to be opening soon so we can go into the mediums as Gasly passes us on that front straight or the back straight whatever straight it is heading down to turn one the Alpha Tower of course also a very very fast car we're now sandwiched between two Alpha Tauris, Gasly in 8th, we're in ninth, and Sonoda behind us in 10th. I 
think we can we can hold off Sonoda. We're far enough ahead we can hold off on him. DRS on Gasly. Can we catch up to him before turn eight? We go. We go on the inside and we manage to fly past him and break very late. But we managed to hold on. Let's take another look at that one. We follow Gasly through turn seven, keeping right on him. DRS activated. He can't get DRS on Norris. He's too far ahead, giving us a, an obvious advantage here. Side by side, he breaks early. We break late, and we get the job done. Heading down to turn eight, and then out of turn nine. Here we are, 0.4 seconds ahead of Gasly. Thanks, Jeff. We're, we're keeping that gap a little bit to Gasly. We come across to the inside of that corner. We do hold him off a little bit, but he is still gaining on us quite quickly. Coasting through these corners here. Taking it very well. Coming down to turn 12. We lock up the wheels a little bit wide at 12. We have to slow down a bit. Gasly starting to close that gap. But it's okay. We have the racing line through 14, down into 15. Max Verstappen and now Lewis Hamilton posting the fastest Green flag. lap. Green flag, we're racing again. Okay, watch your pace. We've been informed that the safety car is out. There appears to have been an issue with multiple stopped vehicles on the track. A new strategy is available on the MFD. Drop your speed, our delta is too low and we risk a penalty. Slow your pace immediately. So, there were, it looks like there was an issue at turn 15. I'm not sure what happened back there, but it has uh, brought the safety car out. We're going to change our pitch strategy and pit under safety car Copy so we that. don't lose too much time. As we go back, we're going to take a look at what the issue was. Uh, so we're on board with our teammate Guan Yu Zhou here, and something happens here and stops all the drivers as he comes up and he crashes in the back of one of the, the hardest cars, and the other and another car comes up behind him. Not sure what happened there. So there's us, we're on board with Sonoda now, and Sonoda spins and he slows down everyone. And if you see in the back there, Guan Yu Zhou hits the Haas, and I think it might have been the other Haas that came behind him, and hit him from behind as well. So there's the safety car. So that so now Guan Yu Zhou is now out of the session. After that collision there. Uh, it looked like he only had front wing damage when he um, hit the car in front of him. And it was the one coming through behind as we forget that we're going into the pits and we have to cut back across the track to the pit lane. It looks like there's a few a few of the uh, front cars here pitting as well. As uh, both Mercedes are in the pits, Perry is in the pits, Norris, signs, Ric uh, Ricardo maybe. I'm losing track with all, the, all these things missing. All these uh, drivers going back and forth on the list, but... Uh, Looks like there's a few cars going into the pits there. Uh, a lot of the faster cars. So a lot of the faster cars pulling in uh, into the pits to go from the softs to the mediums. Uh, under safety car. Which I think is probably the, uh, the smarter decision. As we now uh, can just catch up to the safety car queue and just follow everyone around the track. Uh, so we had to go through another lap of safety car here so now it's, it is now the end of lap six we're on the mediums not a whole lot of tire wears we've all been going around at safety car pace as we head down the back straight racing resumes safety car goes in we're now onto lap seven we have seven laps left so seven laps on mediums are seen, uh, effectively after being on under safety car for two of those laps uh, the two laps before so this should give us uh, an even better run. Uh, I'm pretty sure by now most of the cars should have been into the pits. And everyone should now be on to the mediums as far as I can tell. As we post uh, our current best sector one time on mediums. To, it's good for us. If we can do that on mediums. Then we should uh, be in with a chance here. P14. We've got Norris and Perez in front of us and the McLaren and the Red Bull. Signed in the Ferrari and Hamilton and the Mercedes behind us. We're stuck in between uh, some of the faster cars uh, in the grid. Which could be good for us. 
in terms of getting pulled along by DRS when we get DRS back. It can also be pretty bad because we might get tied up in some in some battles we don't want to get tied up in. As signs go to the inside, but we accelerate around the outside and gain that position back. Luckily, uh, that that could have been bad for us. We could have been pushed right out. Track limit warning. Um, lost multiple positions uh, on top of that. We managed to hold on as we come around turn 15 and down the back straight as Latifi is now into the pits uh, and it looks like a lot of the other cars it looks like there was actually quite a few cars that didn't pit under safety cars we post a 138 our fastest lap in the Grand Prix so far we're now P6 from P14 so about eight other cars that didn't pit under safety cars are now pitting uh, at the start of lap 8 to get onto the mediums uh, or maybe they started on mediums and went onto the softs but I, it looked like most cars started on softs as we go wide wide out of turn 7 there that's uncharacteristic of us so far in this race we managed to hold on to P6 there staying ahead of signs but we just can't gain to Perez on the straights in that Red Bull say now as we are oh, we're, we're sitting just in the same spot it looked like we were gaining but I don't think we were but that was our fastest sector 2 of the Grand Prix so far we go a bit wide they're out of turn 11 but we have a good line coming through turn 12 gaining time to Perez and, but then he just pulls away again um, using the power of that Red Bull car which, uh, as far as I know, would also have the Renault engine in it. So running the same engine, but they've obviously just uh, got a lot more, uh, a lot better parts. Um, a bit further here than R&D. So DRS now activated for lap 9. So we've got 5 laps left of this Grand Prix. As we just posted our fastest lap of the Grand Prix, a 138.9 I think it was, I think it said, so we're now posting faster times on the mediums than we were on the softs, so I think we've finally uh, got uncomfortable on the track, still some hiccups here and there, as we just posted a fastest sector one time again, so we, uh, we're sitting pretty for now, as we log up the wheels there into turn 8, sitting pretty and we make a, a slight mistake like that. That's okay. Um, the So as we come back around through turn 14, as we get a, a track limits warning there, we go wide at 15. We're still sitting in between Perez and Signs. Perez. So we've got five laps worth of fuel, four laps left in this race. So as Sainz goes up the inside of us at turn one, that Ferrari just blasting past us, but then we're going to try and go back again, but we just don't have the pace to get back around him. Um, looks like we did also have a collision with him there as we tried to go past him. So that was probably part of the reason why we didn't gain any time on him. We'll try and get back in front of him, um, apart from the fact that he is also driving a Ferrari was that powerful Ferrari engine so we come around turn 7 on to the long straight heading down to turn 8 we get DRS on signs and we've activate, activated the ERS as well we're going to try and go up the inside he breaks here we break late again but he managed to get back up around the outside and we collide with him we're side by side right there through to turn 9 and we managed to pull ahead out of turn 9 back into P6 as now, as now Hamilton comes up, he gets ahead of us, and then for some reason he has to slow down again. They're heading into uh, turn, what turn was that? Turn 10? No, turn 11. I don't know what happened there, but now Hamilton is ahead of signs. Hamilton's in the 7th, we're still in 6th, we're still holding on to the position there, but we are quite a bit slower this lap. Slower sector 1 and 2. We take turn 14 pretty well. 
wide at 15 again just carrying too much speed into 15 but very hard to pass in that section so we are pulling away from Hamilton again 139 that lap 1.2 seconds of our, our, our fastest pace as we go wide out of turn two come back across we collide with Hamilton front wing damage there we get the warning but that is not good for us that is now going to start affecting our performance as Sainz tries to go up the outside of us on turn four which turns into the inside of turn five we manage to keep him out there around into turn six that front wing damage it's it's really going to affect us as we go wide through turn seven this is really going to affect our handling now it's also going to affect uh, our ability to keep speed as signs with with the DRS just breezes past us in that Ferrari we have to brake a bit harder and a bit earlier than we normally do we go we go very very tight through turn nine there now that this is going to really affect us now that front wing damage is going to affect the handling of the car we're not going to have as much downforce we're not going to be able to reduce that drag as much we're going to have to brake earlier and coast a lot more and as you can see now we go wide at 11 there we have to brake brake a lot harder and a lot earlier and take these corners a bit slower four laps of fuel left only just over two laps left of this race this is going to be tough we are four and a half seconds ahead of Ocon in the Alpine we're gonna to have to try and hold him off two more laps we're not going to pit we can't pit we can't afford to go into the pits if we go into the pits we're gonna to lose too much time and lose too many positions we're in the points we want to stay in the points so we're going to push through we're gonna try and keep that four second gap to Ocon uh, and now it's just dropped down to 3.7 so we're gonna try and stay ahead of Ocon push this car as much as we can we only have to hold him for two more laps I think I think we can do it although in saying that he has already gained quite a bit of time on us uh, we've we'll just gained that back actually with our speed through those corners so 3.9 seconds we're pulling away slowly but we are still pulling away as we take turn 8 pretty tight we hit that bollard it comes back across to say hello at turn 9 three and a half seconds to off on now slower sector two which is to be expected we, we can't we just can't hug the track like we like we were before we're going wide oh we just we just can't we can't take these corners the way we were before we have to we have to go slow we have to break earlier we just have to sort of really try and keep the track position try and stick to the racing line as much as we can and just hope we can keep Ocon uh, out of uh, out of passing position as we got a little bit wide at turn 15 but we managed to hold on come down the back straight to the start finish line lap 12 this completed final lap. Final lap of the race. last lap of the race we've lost 3.8 seconds on our best time through that lap and we only have one lap left to go the gap to Ocon is now only just over a second he's managed to gain three seconds on us in that lap but he had open track to work with whereas now now that he's gonna he's gonna have to try and get around us we're gonna try and hold on to track uh, the racing as much as we can as we get a track limits warning there we do still have quite a bit of speed so we're maintaining a, a decent gap to him he is closing it but not as quick as I think he would hope heading through turn 8 and turn 9 the gap now 0 0.6 0 0.5 seconds but we accelerate out and that is that's where our strength we lies two laps of fuel remaining. okay gap ahead is 8.1 seconds thanks Jeff we don't really need to know the gap ahead of us we just need to know the gap behind us as uh, Ricardo now has passed Russell to get in the, into P10 he's five seconds behind us so we we are going to get some points here unless we make a massive mistake we're going to get some points as Ocon tries to go up the inside of us at turn 12 we managed to hold him out point, point 0.2 seconds now the gap as Charles Leclerc 
takes the figured flag. Ocon goes around the outside. It's turn 14, but we managed to hold on. Turn 15, he's trying to come to the inside. We accelerate out. And we're going to just hold on here to P8. That's the end of the race. We'll see you in Park Fermi. A great race then and a fantastic victory here at Paul Ricard. Anthony Davidson, how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? Well, they played the safety car to absolute perfection. There are so many factors to worry about once the race is neutralised. I mean, do you pit for fresh rubber? Do you have the space behind you? How much fuel can you save? If you answer all of those questions correctly, you'll have a good chance. And that's exactly what happened today. Looking at the podium, you can see that red suit familiar to fans across the globe. A world-class win for a world-class team. Ferrari do it again. And there we have it. P8 at the French Grand Prix, we just managed to edge out Esteban Ocon in the Alpine there after that collision with Hamilton cost us some, uh, gave us some front wing damage there. So happy with that. What a race. What a race. Managed to get four championship points out of that one. That's the best result we have had this season, I do believe. As we take a look down the bottom there, Guan Yu Zhou, DNF after that uh, collision with the two Haas cars at turn 15. That's not going to help uh, our team very much. But it wasn't his fault. He, he got blindsided from behind by the other Haas car, which was effectively what took him out of the race when Sonoda spun and stopped the traffic. But if we take a look at the driver standings page, we've now jumped up into P10. We've gone ahead of Sebastian Vettel, who only has five points. We now have six championship points after eight rounds of the first of season one here for Cross GT Racing, which now puts us up into P6 in the constructor standings ahead of Aston Martin. That's amazing. I'm really happy with that. As we take a look at the front markers there, Red Bull, Mercedes, McLaren, Ferrari, all within double digits of each other. But that gap to Red Bull is starting to close as Mercedes is starting to catch up. Team McLean page. We're now up to Team McLean level 10, which means we can get another sponsor on board, which means more money for the team and more facility upgrades, which is only going to help us in the future. As we take a look at the amount of money we made this race, so damage deductions... Not helping us, but $2.19 million, uh, $2 million in total for our team now, so we can get some more facility upgrades, uh, hopefully. As we come to the end of race weekend here at the French Grand Prix, round 8 completed, P8 for us. What a performance from us there, and what a way to hold on in those last laps after that collision with Hamilton caused us to take some front wing damage and effectively slowed our car down. We were the slowest in the field at that point. So uh, really pulled it together there and came away with our results so far. If you enjoyed watching this, Please leave a like, uh, comment below, and let me know what you think of, what you thought of this one, and what you've been thinking of it so far. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe, it would really help me out. And I will see you guys in the next one for round 9 of the F1 2021 season.